am a gay woman. I go by queer or gay. My name is Aaron Dobson. Hi, my name is Roman. Garrick. Mm -hmm. My name is Joseph Mellick. I am an ally. My name is Brittany Marquez, and I am an ally. I am straight. Day of Silence was created years ago in remembrance of a lot of the teen suicides that were happening and a lot of the victims of hate crimes that were being committed towards the LGBT community. So Day of Silence kind of came about that people wanted to speak up without having to yell, without having to riot. Sometimes the best way to be heard is to be quiet. What Day of Silence means to me is just um, respecting those who we have lost due to tragedies, I mean, such as bullying and um, harassment. Gosh, whether it be in school or anywhere. Um, I think it's incredibly important because it, it recognizes and honors um, victims of hate crimes, of, of murders, of actual like suicides, um, but it's just, it's, it's recognizing that these things do happen and that there, just, there are hate crimes within the community as well as from people outside the community too. So it's just, it's important to remember these and know that, um, that that these crimes are still around and people are still being affected negatively. It's a physical reminder and a physical picture of people that can't speak for themselves because they feel like it's unsafe or they feel like they have to hide who they are. So the tape over their mouths, the being silent, that's what that is. It's a physical manifestation of that. Um, and just when we talk about this, we bring awareness to ourselves and others and that just kind of helps spread the word, like, you know, stick up for our community and just prevent this violence because obviously it's unfair and no one should be treated like that. No one should be a victim of a hate crime. Honestly celebrating who my friends are, even though it's not geared towards, towards too much celebration because it's a day of silence, but because I want to embrace who my friends are, we look towards the past to a better future. It's a remembrance of the people who cannot speak anymore like pretty much people that have died and were it was from hatred that has enveloped our country uh, what I think about personally about the tragedies that we went over today for day of silence it's kind of shocking and a little bit aggravating to know that the age range I think bothers me the most that we go from the ages of 13 to 20, 21 years old that been attacked and bullied and committed suicide to it, uh, like for being bullied. So it bothers me that so young that a boy or a girl could claim that they're homosexual or lesbian and be attacked and, and how would you say, I don't, like just to not feel that love and comfort, I think that's what bothers me the most for people who are younger and to know that they'd rather just take their own lives instead of going to a family member or a counselor or someone at their church. I think that would bother me the most. Oh gosh, the biggest, there's just been so many. As you can tell, I'm an eccentric character. So um, the biggest moment that I've ever faced with discrimination, whoa, that, this, it's sad to say, but there's been a lot. I went through uh, a little bit of discrimination at another college. Um, I ended up hurting myself over it because my roommates were not accepting. I, I also ended up changing rooms because of it. Um, and just, it's, it took a while for me to realize that no, that's not okay for other people to, to treat me like that, to talk to me like that. I think when I came out, my father stopped talking to me for nine years. I think that's the worst thing that's ever happened because he's supposed to love you unconditionally and that whole thing, so. Um, I was told I could not go in the boys' locker room by other boys because when my head was turned, they threatened that they would hit me with a baseball bat on my head. So it's just, it's everyone's experiences. Like I've had people, you know, come up to me and tell me what they've gone through and just like, I mean, that's ridiculous to me. Why, why should anyone be bullied? Why should anyone have to hurt because of who they are? And when I heard that, it just kind of made me feel A, very scared, B, uncomfortable, and C, I felt like I couldn't trust anybody. I felt like I couldn't trust the coaches. I feel like I couldn't trust 
anything. So to know that if I was to, God forbid, walk into the boys' locker room, that I would be attacked and physically harmed, I think that was one of my biggest discrimination things that I've ever experienced. I believe it's made me stronger because I've been able to deal with the hatred easier because like losing a loved one or having a loved one stop talking to you is harder than anything anybody can throw at you. I went to my counselor. I actually did go to uh, the counselor recommended me a psychiatrist because I felt that I could not walk on campus without looking over my shoulder. I actually stopped walking home from school because I was scared and the school gave me a free bus pass. Like that was to compensate for anything. But I, I was very scared. So I would say my trust was definitely taken from underneath me. I've been discriminated against, but I tend to be the person out there for others. And I actually found out that me being more comfortable in my own skin and me being who I was all the time, people respected me more. And the straight guys, and straight girls would slowly say, oh, you know what, you are so much more than just the gay kid at our campus. And all the things that happened to me in high school, whether it was things being thrown at me in the hallway or me, my life being threatened, it only made me stronger. I think it's okay for it to kind of invoke a feeling of remembrance and not so much guilt, but mourning. It's a serious problem. Um, kids as young as 12, 13 years old are taking their own lives because they don't feel safe here. They don't feel safe anywhere. They don't feel like who they are as a person is good enough or will ever be good enough. So I think it's okay for people to feel that feeling in their core of sadness because it's sad. Because as people, we should all be able to love on each other without having to justify who we are as a person. I think if it's possible, you do, you like, you do need a little bit of both. Like It does get better, but I do think that when people are, you know, are wearing a shirt with the victim's faces on it. When people see a face, it makes it more personal. And I mean, there you do need that serious tone to it. Cause I mean, if it's just, you know, all fun and games, like what, what message are you getting across? Like you do need to know the, the sadder side of things. Like it's just, it's something that happened, it's history. And you know, without that history, we're not gonna learn from it. So it's very important that, that the more negative side is displayed. Um, because I think if we don't, then you know we're, we continue this facade that society has created that there are there is no suffering. But then the positive is that it gets the message through that bullying is unaccept like it's unacceptable. You just you shouldn't bully anybody, whether it's they're off their orientation, their gender, their race, whatever. You just shouldn't bully anybody in general. Again, you can't just go around being like you know everybody is sad all the time. You do need to see that there there is support out there. I think that people should want to take up a cause. I think especially people around our age and our demographic, people forget that there's still a fight going on. This is one of the final push in the civil rights movement, and this is important. I grew up with gay uncles all around me, so I've been really blessed to have that in my life as a constant feed. But not everybody has that. Not everybody has that support. Right here, two people are actually being hung because they are gay in Iran, I believe the country is and just for kissing. Some of them have died very, very heinously. They've been dragged on the back of trucks. They've been shot in their place of school. They've been shot like Lawrence King two years ago. You may have remembered him. Shot in place of school, shot in their place of work, shot in their place of their favorite place, maybe a bar, or even some of them have been killed in their home. Gay teens my age don't have that kind of support. So as someone who is their age, it's my job to be that support for them. So I, I do think it's important for straight people to take up the cause too. Like, we'd want someone to stand up for us if someone took away some of our rights. Why like, can't we stand up for other people? I think that days like this, like coming out week and day of silence and other things like pride help people see that our community isn't going away. We are people and we are here to stay. It's about love, it's about acceptance, it's about me loving on someone regardless of what they are because who you are, your sexual orientation is not everything you are. Accepting everybody, like even just tolerating everybody is a good thing. Like you don't have to like them, you don't have to love them, you just have to accept them. They're people. People are people. I mean, I accept bigots and people that hate me and I don't tolerate, or I tolerate them, but I don't necessarily like them so 
I think that the more people educate themselves, the more their under the more their understanding can grow. And I look at people that essentially are preaching hatred to even little kids. You're you're feeding these hate to kids and they don't need that. This world is filled with so much hate as it is. Why are we going to fill it with more? Like, it's not that hard to teach someone just to love on someone. It's really not. I believe it's being fought. I don't think it's changed much because there are a lot of people that still believe that gay people and LGBT community is not supposed to be here at all. There's a lot of people coming up to the table and I mean, they took it seriously, they, they were interested, they wanted more information, and even if they just walked past, they were, you know, we were making eye contact, like, you know they saw us kind of thing, and that to me, that's gratifying enough. Like, you don't need to come up to the table, but as long as you see us and that seed is planted, I think, you know, we're doing the right thing. Only through looking at the past can we celebrate the future, a future that may not completely eliminate bigotry, but definitely, you know, squash it. In a perfect world, I would just honestly say, which I slowly think we're getting there. I don't see it happening anytime soon, but we're slowly getting there where gay is no longer a label, even though as much as people say we're always going to have labels, we are, we're always going to have labels, but no one's going to say, oh, that's the gay couple, or oh, that's the lesbian couple, or that person's transgendered, or that person's a hermaphrodite. It's more like they're just people. At, at the end of the day, we all bleed the same color. I know some people think they bleed blue. I mean, I haven't seen that yet in my 21 years of living. But we all bleed the same color. We all do the same activity. We all sleep, we all eat, we all love, and we all hurt. So at the end of the day, we're not labeled by our sexual orientation. And we all just kind of unite, as cheesy as that sounds. But it's kind of like we are who we are at the end of the day, and that's it. When all the world can touch you just takes one, all the world could hold you. Fear no love, all the world can touch you. It just takes one. All right, I think that's it.